Welcome to ME160 Engineering Drawing Part 6 Development 6 Learning Objectives Part 6 1. Understand the principles of surface development 2. Apply the, the parallel line method 3. Apply the radial line method 4. Apply the triangulation method and 5. The approximation method Part 6, 6.1. 6.1. 1, principles of surface development. Objectives. Identify types of solids. Identify types of solid surfaces. And also explain the principle of surface development. Types of solid. In engineering graphics, solids are generally classified as 1 polyhedral and two are solids of revolution. They may also be classified as one right solid or B oblique solids. Types of solid right cylinder. Its axis is perpendicular to its base. Here we have a picture, we have a drawing showing the elevation. The base or the lower opening gives us the diameter and its axis is perpendicular to, the, to that part, so it's a right prism. The cross section, which is a cut through that portion here, and it is circular in nature. Now, the second view shows a cut portions of the same right triangle this time. Again, the diameter specifying the actual cross section of it. So the top opening is an elliptic in nature. And then we have the cross section, which is also going to be circular cross section. Now, a third view represented pre representing a cylinder slanting on the top ends as well as the lower ends. Here, however, the diameter measured here is given, and the cross section also specifies the circular cross section, and the top opening and lower opening are ellipse of the same type. Right cylinder. Here we have a, an example of application of right cylinders being connected. How do we see it? The diameter which shows that it is a right cylinder because it is perpendicular, the axis are perpendicular to it. Oblique cylinder. For an oblique cylinder, it has its axis inclined to its base. The base does the diameter being specified over here. So, and note the cross section here is no longer a circular, but ellipse shaped. Again, the same figure, this time let's take the diameter which is the opening corresponding to the true shape of the opening and here the cross section is going to be a elliptical cross section. Then again the same thing, the same view as the previous one but this time the dimension diameter is across here so it is an oblique cylinder. The diameter does a cross section through that object will give us an ellipse shape. Let's look at another example, typical application. This time, why is it an oblique cylinder? The diameter, the opening, that's the lower opening, is the diameter, not the middle. So the axis is inclined to that opening. So it is an oblique cylinder. Right cone or pyramid. Its axis is perpendicular to its base. Here we have the height, the vertex, the height, and the path along which it goes, and that is the base, and we see here it is perpendicular to it. Now here we have our cone with its axis perpendicular, the diameter is the base over here defined. Likewise, we look at this drawing over here. Here we have is a truncated cone which has been cut out with portions of the cut out portion shown in red. But looking at the diameter as it is from the base taken from here, that is how it has been formed. Therefore, this is a right triangle, a right cone. 
Now let's look at an oblique cone or pyramid. Here we, again we have this showing. Now if you look at this, that is the curve, the base of it as such, and then the axis of the axis of the cone, which is inclined to the base, and the height is also inclined as it is to the axis, not as it is. Here we have that cone shown now in the drawing, and clearly the diameter identified here is D, different from this over here. This is a circular lower opening, and therefore it is inclined and therefore an oblique cone. Right prism. A prism has its axis perpendicular to its base. The lateral edge, that is the lateral edge, right? The lateral edge of the prism is perpendicular to its base as it is. Now, take a look at an oblique prism. Now, the lateral edge is not perpendicular to the base, so it is an oblique prism. Types of solid surfaces. One, in engineering practice, practice, Surfaces of solids fall into three categories, ruled surfaces, warped surfaces, and double curved surfaces. A ruled surface can be produced by moving a line along a straight or curved path. Let's see examples of ruled surfaces. Now the plane surface. The plane surface is the situation where you have a line AB and you move it along two parallel lines XY and this is the result of a plane as these lines moves along on it, moves along it. Typical examples are the surfaces of a prism. Then let's look at the second example, simple, that is a single curve surfaces. Single curve surfaces, a typical example is the cylindrical surface, whereby cylindrical shape-wise we have it curve along one particular sub end of it, like what we have over here is a single curve surface, parallel lines curved around. Now here it shows the two views, that is the elevation and this is the plan of the line and then the curve. So here is a straight curve and here can be another curve that is that is here, sorry, this is a curve at the base but it is horizontal. Just like we have here, that is our curve but it's on a horizontal base. So there it will be a line and here it will show the curve corresponding to that. Here we have a similar thing over here, a typical example is the cylinder. Now let's look at the conical surface. In the case of the conical surface, that is a horizontal base, so the elevation of it is going to be a straight, a horizontal line, but the curve itself is, has a nature here, which is the top view as we see the curve of it. And now the point that is a line AB, which prescribes, moves on this curve, but actually restricts itself through a particular point, S over here. So you can see in moving through, it always passes through the vertex, that is the S point, to give us the result. A typical example is the cone. Now let us look at the convolute surface. The convolute surface is one, there are two types, the tangent convolute and then the, sorry, the tangent line convolute and then the tangent plane convolute. In the tangent line convolute, you normally have a double curve directrix. That means it has two curve situations, one on the plane that will be circular and another or the other side rising up. So it's double curve directrix. The line that we move along this directrix must be tangent to that line. So for all situations, it's tangent to it. Now in the other situation, that is our directrix. However, there are two of them. However, here the line lies on a plane which is tangential to the directrix. Here you have directrix. There are two of them. And this plane is always tangential to the two. And our line must lie on that plane. Tangent plane convolute. Now it's the second B. 
Web Surface. Web Surface is a road surface for which two successive elements are neither parallel nor pass through a common point. That is the opposite of what we have for the plane as well as what that we have for the single curve situation. It's not here. Hmm. Example here, we have this warp surfaces which is shown over here, but we will not take this as part of our list. Now, types of solid steel double curve surface. That is generated by revolving a curve line about a straight line in the plane of the curve. The straight line is the axis. Typical examples are, for example, here we have the axis, that's our straight line, and we have our curve, which is a circle over here of radius small r and a capital R. For various relationship between capital R and small r, here for capital R being greater than small r, we have a torus. For capital R being less than small r, we have a closed tor torus. And where R capital R is got to zero, we have a sphere. Hmm. Development involves true lengths. True lengths of the lines require knowledge of one, the type of surface, example, planar surface, cylindrical surface, conical or warp surface must be known. Two, the shape of the surface. One, it can be triangular square, etc. Then three, position of the surface is very important because we have to develop surface to surface. Position relative to a reference surface or an edge. Principle of surface development. For development, principle of surface development, we should differentiate developable surfaces, which are surfaces that may be unfolded or unrolled to lie flat. Then we call those surfaces developable surfaces. The true development, in, true development involves no stretching or distortion of the surface. Planes, single curve surfaces, or combinations of combinations of these are developable. However, warped and double curve surfaces are not directly developable. They involve distortion and then st or stretching of the object. Procedure of development. One, introduce suitable lines onto the surface of the solid. Two, which you can achieve by the method of development. Then two, determine the true length of these lines. That is by auxiliary method auxiliary projection or rabattment methods. Then three, cut open along a line and normally with the shortest true length or located at a convenient uh, position. We select a line at a convenient position such as the welding, the bringing together of, this, bringing together of the edges will give us a form which is beautiful. Then also to after you've cut open, you should be able to unfold the pieces to lie flat. Methods of development. The following methods are involved in surface development. Parallel line method, radial line method, triangulation method, and approximation method. The outcome of development processes are one, the pattern of the developed surface with the true lengths and true shapes of that surface is shown. Two, true shapes of the lower and upper sections, which are the openings, if not provided, must be given. And three, dihedral angles between planes must also be provided. Thank you, part of, thank you for end of part 6.1.